Summit 2014 in Berlin, and with me is Iyad Madesh, co-founder and CEO of ResearchGate. Hello, yeah. Hi. So, what is ResearchGate and why did you found it? Yeah, so ResearchGate is a social network for scientists. The reason I founded ResearchGate was based on my own experience as a scientist. Um, when I was working as a scientist in, you know, for a couple of years, I noticed that especially negative result, results about failed experiments is not getting shared with other scientists in the world. And this creates um, you know, a lot of redundancy, research redundancy in this world. And I was thinking about what would happen if we would just upload all this data into one system. Um, and this was the idea, okay, to build a system where scientists can present themselves and connect and collaborate with other scientists in the world. Um, and this is something what uh, has been vastly successful in the last five years. And, and how, how exactly would, would you say is it changing the nature of, of academic work? Yeah. So, on the, first of all, it's not only changing the work of, uh, not only the, the way how academic work, um, it's also changing how scientists in general are working. Um, so also corporate scientists. Um, in the past, it was rather, you know, you were in your own lab, you're trying to find the solution with, with your colleagues, which are in the same four walls you are doing your research in. But now it's different. You have a community of people, um, the world, like all the scientists in the world, uh, where you can address your questions to. Um, you can share your results and your publications in real time uh, in a social network, which then again let other people discover content they would not have discovered without this network. And this will create, and this already created tons of successful collaborations, which would not have been um, happened if the research gate would not exist. And from your own experience, um, coming yeah. to, to the idea of, of entrepreneurship and, and, uh, and founding enterprises, yeah. how could young people be motivated to become entrepreneurs? I think, um, it is. It starts early. It starts very early, right? Um, especially, let's. We always can get earlier and earlier. But let's let's talk about universities in general, right? Um, especially in Germany. Is I, I know Germany. I lived in Germany. I lived in the U.S. The way we treat entrepreneurs and we treat the topic entrepreneurship is in Germany always a little bit has a negative touch. Um, people say, "Oh, you want to become rich," right? Even if they don't know that only 0.0001% is successful with them. With, a, um, with, with endeavors. So the way we treat entrepreneurship and how we teach entrepreneurship has to be changed in academia. Um, that's something what in the US is already different. You know, you have in Stanford and Harvard, all these different univers top universities where people are actively trying to uh, convince people even to build up their businesses, to, build, you know, to take the risk and to build up um, their startups. And that is something what we, in case of Germany, we definitely have to learn a lot and we have to change how we uh, position entrepreneurship in our education. And, and what, what could politics do to foster a startup scene in Germany? I think if I would answer that question, I would say not that much, except all the, um, the frame, all the environment has to be right. You know, you need, of course, um, I, so for example, I don't think that there are, except for example, that's internet connections, all these different things, of course, there is something where we have to work where also politics can help. But, um, and, and also of course regulation, visa, and all these different things that people can um, enter the German uh, labor market quick without um, um, uh, longer uh, bureaucratic uh, processes. But at the end it comes down to the startups again. So I am not that person who tried to say, oh the politics has to do X, Y, and Z. It's rather, if we are successful with what, what we're doing, and if we adjust ourselves to the ecosystem we live in, then the ecosystem is going to change. Also, the politics is going to change. So we are, as entrepreneurs, are in the responsibility to push um, this ecosystem further and that we are creating an environment for our, for our own that is fruitful for us and uh, makes a, um, a difference in, in, in what we're doing. So, so what would you, would you say then to sum up are the key uh, challenges that startups are facing in Europe right now? Maybe it, even compared to the U.S. Yeah, um, definitely it's, it's fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, it is guidance. I think guidance is even more important than fundraising. Um, you need people who have built up successful startups if you want to build up your own startup. Um, in my case, Matt Kohler, who's a very close friend now of mine, built up LinkedIn and Facebook. He was co-founder of LinkedIn and second employee at Facebook um, after the three co-founders. 
this guy has very unique knowledge and to help us building building up a startup. And these people you need in order to be you know um, successful. Um, so it's definitely you need you need mentors, you need money, and you need uh, the infrastructure. And what infrastructure? You mean? Yeah. Um, for example, that you have, for in case of Berlin, for example, you, that you have all the internet connections you need, that you have uh, high-speed interconnections, that you have offices where you can grow quick, mm -hmm. um, all these different things, which should not be a burden or hurdle mm -hmm. while you while you're growing. This should not be the stopper. Okay. So that already, I, I guess, uh, sums it up uh, uh, very nicely. But but still, at the end, uh, when you say uh, when you could have one wish free. What would it be to bring Europe up uh, up to speed in terms of digitizing and, and startup development? What would that be? One wish would be that we start accepting failure as a very important part of building up a business. I think this, if I would, you know, this is the one wish I would like to have. That is a perfect word of closing. Thank okay. you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you.